After a full year as a subscriber to PureFlix, the evangelical Christian streaming service, I was rather surprised to discover a show called Hilton Head Island because I thought I knew the formula for all of the series on so-called Christian Netflix. Sappy grandparent stories with positive moral lessons laid on heavier than that goalpost that they made Jesus carry on his final field day. What? It's not illegal for me to describe it that way. The Bible is open to interpretation. And Hilton Head Island chooses to interpret it as a soap opera style melodrama that reveals the dark, gritty underbelly of a local family-owned television studio that is also world famous somehow. Featuring the powerful Trisk patriarchy, who are so good at putting on the daily news that even the real rooms inside their house are green screen studios with quickly rendered digital backgrounds. So it feels like they're all meteorologists giving you the weather all the time. But virtual sets aren't the only comforting Pure Flix staple that this series brings us. We also get fully baptized by the sickly lighting, shocking medical twists, and racial tokenism that sort of feels more problematic than if they had just kept the cast entirely white. In the name of the father, the son, and the holes in my handbag, it's time for another Pure Flix installment of Clip Breakdown. Ah. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another Pure Flix installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content on the web and elsewhere. And we break it down like a troubled teen in the name of the Lord so that we can look at each individual clip and clop and say, yes, peace be with you, and no, not also with you. And today we, ah, uh, oof, it's a whole nother Another, another. I hate when I say another because like another is not a word. But this is a whole nother breed of Pure Flix show because we've got a lot of the same kind of, they obviously shot it very fast, but it's also the tone is confusing to the point where I'm like, is it trying to be The Sopranos? Although it features a soap opera star, so it's clearly trying to also capture that audience. There's so much to get into, but before we do, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up to let me know you want to see even more Pure Flix content broken down like this. Also, don't forget to click subscribe so you get two new videos from me every week. Also, you can check out my brand new podcast, The Faking Of, on this channel, where we fake our way through the mostly true behind the scenes stories of our favorite movies. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon. There is so much stock footage in what I'm about to show you that I feel like I owe royalty fees to Shutterstock. Is that a new tie, Daniel? <laughs> this old thing. <laughs> I remember that joke from when you took your out at the company Christmas party. Also, I can't say that I know much about Hilton Head, South Carolina, but it feels like even that aerial beach footage would call the cops on a Latino kid who was fundraising by selling candy bars in their neighborhood. Everything in this whole episode feels like a dress rehearsal. Like it feels like the, the technical run before they actually shot the show. Cause it's all a little rushed and not quite ready. <laughs> 60 seconds, need your mic on Suzanne. Really? I thought I'd do sign language tonight. Not funny. That response wasn't even in the script. He's just a very blunt actor giving his live feedback during the tape. Just like the other Pure Flix series that takes place behind the scenes at a popular morning show called Malibu Dan the Family Man, Hilton Head Island uses an uncanny combination of digital green screen backgrounds, real life wooden chairs, and a couple of the same multi-purpose rooms with creepy overhead lighting. However, I guess they thought they could get away with reusing basically the same setting for both shows since Malibu Dan was meant to be a true sitcom with a laugh track and everything. You can tell right from this opening scene that Hilton Head Island is trying to be something a little more self-serious. You hear his thoughts on... What's wrong? Trade... Policy. Go to commercial, now! Oh, if... Daniel! Now, I'm not a doctor, but I do meditate daily, and I think one half of his face just got very, very relaxed. I really hope the first commercial they cut to is a PSA on what to do when someone is having a stroke, because all of the people in this TV studio are acting like they've never even heard of a medical emergency before. Your news anchor just read his own obituary and then slid under the desk. Let's call 911. The crew rushes to help Daniel, and we go to this very outdated Pure Flix uh, logo, so I know this is 
one of their earlier series. You can also tell from these uh, Final Cut Pro Graphic packages. What in the corporate slideshow template are they trying to do with these? I wonder what these prefabricated transitions were titled inside their editing software. Probably something like vertical stripes, comma, fuchsia glamour. And yes, as you just saw, this pure flick soap opera also stars Donna Mills, who starred for almost a decade on the soap opera Knott's Landing, starting in 1980. That's a fact that I looked up on Wikipedia because I knew she had to be the most famous person in the cast because her acting fits in the best with the show and she clearly hired a better makeup artist than everyone else. You won't catch her on this micro-budget TV show without perfectly smoked brown shadow that makes her blue eyes look extra wet somehow, like she's permanently remembering her husband's stroke. Which yes, that was the inciting incident for the entire series. Why does Pure Flix love to kick off all of their sitcoms or other episodic serials with like the weirdest inciting event? I don't have time to philosophize about it. Philosophize philosophize. We gotta keep moving on. This show is 20 minutes long. That's, it could take all day. Ah uh, yes, I remember all of that South Carolina stock footage from this entire show up until now. Seriously, those are the same exact clips that we saw at the opening of the show and throughout the title sequence. We get it, the wealthy have access to private deserted beaches. But at a certain point, don't you kind of want a lifeguard to be on duty? That rich oldie was sitting at a desk on live TV and still suffered several moments of strokiness before anyone even called for help. What's gonna happen in the open water when that sea kayak flips over and your survival is left in the hands of God and that Boniva you started taking two weeks ago. I've watched this episode a couple times now for whatever reason and I can't figure out why they would start the show like that and then go to two hours earlier when they could have just not left and like left it in sequential order and built the suspense up like we know something's gonna happen on air because there's this mysterious air to everything and it's setting up all this family politics that's gonna like get ignited like a powder keg once this stroke happens on air. That's not what they do. We have this flashback. <laughs> you have a fun day? Hey dad. How are you? Yeah, please. Nice to see you. Ew, why is this scene blocked like an intimate play that you just realize is gonna be really boring? But like you can't leave early without the entire cast and audience noticing you. Also, why did they frame the shot so that not only can we see miles of airspace above these people who are unnaturally standing in a line, but also so that each one of them are uncomfortably cut off at the ankle. Don't do that. This is basic photography principles. Like if you took a high school photography class, they would teach you it's not good to cut off parts of people's bodies. But there must be a reason they're neglecting basic composition. Is all that extra headroom filled with guardian angels that I only get to see if I put on the Pureflix godly glasses that come with the premium subscription? I would be so interested to see if they could shoot the show on green screen without it looking this flat, two-dimensional, and play-like. For me, the answer almost always comes down to adding depth to the scene. Like, give me something before all of these people, like people moving in the foreground, people bustling in the background, people entering and leaving the scene rather than just like a static group of people who are all waiting for their chance to talk. It feels very much like they might have rehearsed this show as though it were a play and then just shot it live to tape, meaning they shoot it like it's a live broadcast, but they're just recording it so that they can like kind of record it twice and then edit together the two best performances. The only reason I come here is for the free hors d'oeuvres and the fancy French soda water. <laughs> if it was up to Daniel, we'd all be eating burgers and fries. <laughs> Hence the primetime stroke he's about to treat us to this evening. And honestly, I would rather watch that again than whatever this private press conference of old guys complimenting each other is supposed to be. They said, come, come everybody, welcome to our fancy party. Everyone grab a goblet of still water while we talk about some characters that you'll meet in just a few minutes. Like, what is going on here? I don't need this scene, kill it. Who would have guessed any child of mine was gonna be a brainy <laughs> medical type? <laughs> hey dad. 
I picked up last night's uh, readings on the way over and uh... Hold up, can we check in with the woman in purple, screen right? Because that shot caught her looking so concerned that either someone in the room just flashed a gun at her, or she suddenly felt a cubic meter of diarrhea drop into her lower intestines. It's a familiar look. I've seen that face before. But no, that was just an, it was just a weird insert shot they decided to use. So basically in this scene they're like, oh, Tom, or whatever your old name is, the whole success of this network is thanks to you being a great news anchor because he knows what his audience wants to hear. And I'm like, is he in charge of what is considered news also? Don't journalists write the stories? Anyway, the point is he's like much loved by the world of television watching news consumptioners. Folks have to be getting tired of seeing this old dog's face every night. I'm already tired of it. And we're only five minutes into the first episode. Since your entire show was going to be shot on green screen, didn't anyone want to work out some lighting where there wouldn't be that sickly yellow reflection on the the whole cast? Or maybe this family has just been anti-vax for so many generations that they all still have yellow fever from the 1770s. He has a couple sons, this guy, and the, like you can tell one of them is really about the business while the other one is more in tune with his father's beliefs about the Lord and not caring about the money. The only reason why any of us are here is because of what you started here before we were born. You retire in our ratings, will crash. The director is like, probably wouldn't have given that guy the option to read off of cue cards if I knew he still had to sound out his words like that. I feel like they wanted us to think that this was some powerful, intimidating family, so they just had everyone wear the ties and dresses they were saving for Easter mass. Our ad rates are directly tied to our network news. This was never just about the money, Christian. Of course not. The money is just the part that facilitates our entire way of life, such as membership to this yacht club. Speaking of, is there any way we can close off that hallway while we're recording this because a couple of real life staff members just suddenly appeared on screen. And on Pure Flix, it kind of messes with the tempo when non-token black characters slip through the cracks. Now we flash forward. I don't know, like, so they literally just moved that two hour scene. Like they just switched two scenes for some reason to make it interesting because they maybe they saw it in a TV show before. They thought it would make it like a good hook for a first episode. We didn't need that. Cause now we're right back to not just the now, but what they call. I'm about to lose my mind at these breaking news graphics templates they keep crowding the screen with. They just said, Coming up at six, a special puppet show to help local children process the stroke-related death they witnessed on this morning's news. Followed at 6.05 by uncensored photos of the dead body. Because you're watching the 24-hour media cycle where your bad news is our bottom line. Look how much information they're trying to get across on these titles are like, it's present time. It's like, obviously, we would have figured that out. Hilton Head Harbor Hospital, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, Latitude North, Longitude West, Humidity 15 degrees, like, is this AccuWeather, babe? Come on, just start the scene. This is the same background that was Dan the Malibu family man's office, so that's annoying. Like, you can't even download a new screensaver. I'm afraid I can only discuss patient care with the immediate family. Oh, oh. um, okay, well, I'll be outside. What the hell was that racist? <laughs> that doctor looked right at the black guy and was like, can you, uh, get him out of here. There are like so many ways that this person could be a part of their immediate family. So I don't know why Dr. Hair Gel Hellscape MD is acting like that's their Uber Eats driver who followed them into the ER waiting room somehow. They still have to do tests to confirm what sort of cerebral event occurred, even though like he did this. So I think we know. Speech suddenly slowed down as if he was uh, searching for words. You know who our father is, don't you? I do, Miss Trisk then you know he doesn't have to search for words. Yes, sweetheart. And usually his face doesn't droop to one side like a deformed SpongeBob ice cream bar. That's why we're taking pictures of his brain right now. She's like, doctor, don't you know our father is usually very well spoken and also not foaming at the mouth and falling on the ground? Yes, we do know. That's a common reason for why people should come to the hospital. She's not the smart one in the family, I guess. The doctor's like, it'll take a few weeks to know what happened and the family's like, are you kidding me? They're very Karen-esque. Like this family, like just let this doctor go back to his patients, God. They are not hearing it. They cannot just let their dad be in the hospital where he kind of needs to be to have his best chance at surviving. Your husband needs monitoring, ongoing hospital care. 
people die in hospitals, doctor. I don't feel like you're interpreting that statistic the right way, mama. But honestly, I don't even want to argue with this doctor anymore because I'm afraid that dangling crispy green bean of hair on his forehead is going to snap off and cut someone's foot. What is it with Pure Flix being like, all right, so first step, let's add a half cup of dippity do to every man's hair, and then we'll take sections and roll them into snakes like Play-Doh. You're giving these people dreads. It's not the move. These god rich people are like, no, the best place for my husband is at home, not with all these sick people who are dying. Your father would want to be home. I wish that were possible, but... My husband is not some rummy who passed out on the street, you know, doctor. Exactly. The situation is actually much more dire than that from a medical standpoint. If he passed out from drinking, we probably would send him home with you. But right now, he's even hooked up to a machine that's helping him poop. So somehow, I don't think your sleep number bed is gonna cut it here. But through the persistence of sheer being annoying, they leave against medical advice with the dad. I feel like wealthy people in this case would like either go to a, a really fancy private hospital or you can pay to have, I would imagine, like your bedroom made into a fully equipped hospital room, but that would take renovations too. Either way, there were moments of this episode that were so expositional and boring that I wanted to throw my phone. Luckily, my phone is protected by the sponsor of today's video, Casetify. Casetify cases are both stylish and protective. The impact cases are engineered with two-layer Chi Tech, making them drop test approved for up to 6.6 .6 feet. I used to get the cheap cases off of Amazon, and these ones are just as slim, but actually offer protection. You can also get a truly custom case by adding your name or monogram. Hi. Casetify also keeps your phone germ-free with its antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of germs. And check it, that says it's made with 50% recycled materials like all case defy cases. So you can feel good about protecting your phone and if you're getting the new iPhone, I would definitely add one of these to your list. They even have sustainable materials like this compostable version. Plus case defy always has collaborations with amazing brands and designers. Check out these adorable fruit stickers. It speaks to my obsession with fruit. As someone who used to be very minimalist with uh, phone cases, it was so much fun to find something that still matched my taste but was completely custom to me. So I'm very happy with the way my phone looks now. Go to casedefy.com slash today to get 15% off your new favorite phone case. I seriously, I'm obsessed. The family has to have business meetings to be like, what's gonna happen to the news station? And it's like, has the dad never gotten sick before and couldn't go on air? They must have someone. This is the same energy as gay conversion therapists meeting to discuss the camper who performed Lady Gaga at the talent show last night. How are you holding up? I'm just trying to figure out how we let this happen. I'm just so worried that hearing the chorus to Poker Face might have moved some kids back up a point on the Kinsey scale. No, Mackenzania, you can't think that way, okay? We're gonna rescue all of those little queers. Uh, uh, they're waiting for the sister to arrive who is like a neurosurgeon, so obviously they really want her to be the patient advocate while the dad is in care. But in the meantime, they keep introducing all of these other women who are maybe sisters too, or like in-laws. I get so confused. They all kind of look exactly the same too. What do the doctors say? It's what they don't say, which is plenty. For example, the doctors say he needs all these blood medicines and brain scans. But what they won't tell us is how we're supposed to know that those aren't actually microchips and mind control scans. Mind scan controls scanners. It's like a, I saw it on Breitbart. I don't understand a single word of this family's logic. They're like, the doctors aren't, the doctors are going to tell you what they know. And how are you going to somehow get more information bringing him home? Finally, someone talks about the Lord because I almost forgot that this wasn't just a terrible HBO show. Is it when I called Pastor Simon to let him know? This isn't about prayer, big brother. This is about business. And dad built this business by putting himself in the hands of a higher power. If you guys don't all shut up soon, I'm gonna start getting real jealous of the guy whose brain is spazzing out because it seems like at least he doesn't have to be in this room right now. But our heroine of the show, Bixa, she's ready to take the reins of this uh, unfortunate event. Tell them that Daniel Trisk will be taking temporary leave of absence. They'll be appointing a new interim CEO, me. 
I'm the higher power now. Look at me, sure. I'm the higher power now. I'm sure that line would have served if you were acting in a show where your co-stars didn't look like the usual lunch crowd at Monticelli's Italian Restaurant Day in Western Massachusetts. This show seems to be confused by centering itself around this somehow family-owned TV network that really only does the news and also kind of vaguely seems like a mob patriarchy. At least in that everyone from this family looks the same and I could picture any one of them at a restaurant supply convention in Las Vegas. Oh, whoa, doggy. This series is working my holy out, mama. It's just like a perfect storm of awful acting, terrible production, confusing tone, and just like all around, like why is this even on Pure Flix? Three seasons. We get some more of the exact same stock footage, and then we end up in, yeah, it's gotta be a green screen restaurant. Although sometimes I really can't tell, and I'm like, I, uh, uh, is this like a real practical location? But I think they're just like really wide backgrounds that they sell for green Green studio specifically. So like when they show a close up of this woman, they can actually change the perspective of the background and it looks a little more natural. Is he okay? He's at home now. Okay, so if he's at home, then he's okay. Not exactly. I mean, Mrs. Triss, she felt that she Instead of having him at a hospital, she would rather have him at home. We were all happy with that take. There are no objections to the obviously flubbed lines, right? Because the camera team kind of put in for an order of fried cheese and we can see it coming out of the oven in the background of the shot right now. I know this wasn't shot in an actual active restaurant because the audio sounds way too clean. Also, can you imagine actually trying to shoot a TV show in an active restaurant with a wood burning pizza oven? My it would be a hot, wet puddle soaking into the padding of those chairs. The older brother doesn't want the weather anchor, who he sexistly calls the weather girl, to take the space of the news anchor desk, which to me is like sexist, 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 but he, he wants to keep it in the family, I think, because this woman is not part of their tryst family. But the other relative or cousin or brother are, I don't know if they're family members or some of them just work on the show, but this guy's like a producer and he's like, no, we want the anchor to be up and walking around like other news shows do. I didn't know this was a point of difference between different news shows, like where some anchors are behind a desk and sometimes they're walking around. Like I never notice that kind of thing because who cares? Drew thinks we should get her out from behind Daniel's desk. Not a bad idea. A news anchor walking around the set. It's called an anchor desk, Dave. Whoa, did you see that guy throw the pizza dough in the air? Just like in the movies. All right, on hell, you know what? We will take a look at the full menu after all, okay? They're like, we just stopped by for some coffee, but hey, maybe we can try feeding our comatose dad some garlic knots if we like soak them in milk first. He's like, it's called a news anchor desk. I'm like, oh, cause it anchors the news to the desk? <laughs> it's not a boat anchor, what? Have you seen Shepard Smith on Fox? The guy never sits down. Yeah, but he's a journalist with years of experience. Yikes, you guys aspire to be like someone on Fox News? Should have guessed. As it just so happens, I have seen Shepard Smith because I use his photo to illustrate what I don't want when I go to get Botox. But clearly someone on this show really wanted to suck up to him. Does Shepard Smith like watch Pure Flix? Cause I feel like they're like, ooh, I hope he sees that we just complimented him on the show. I don't think I'm saying this to be mean, but why does everything that conservative Christian men do radiate the closeted gay energy of a middle school play rehearsal? Like you wanna f Shepard Smith or whatever. You wanna sit on Tucker Carlson's Tucked Carlson. <laughs> Is Tucker Carlson from Fox News? Let me see. Yeah, he's that one I hate from Fox News. <laughs> you wanna sit on his Tucked Carlson? <laughs> what is that? Also, do we love the f backlight, baby? I can change the colors of it. You don't. The production is going up all the time. Yeah. Okay, back to those ancillary people of color who like to flesh out these shows. Namely, this woman who we did see at the original like yacht club party. Four doctors showed up with the ambulance and they got him carried upstairs and in his own bed. My guess is Mrs. Trisk pressured those doctors pretty good. Yes, and now we've repeated that theory several different times via several different characters. And that's since the time we saw it actually happen on screen five minutes ago. The way that they keep repeating the same information, but in different ways, was this show made for people who are experiencing a stroke 
right now? I know I'm safe since I eat Honey Nut Cheerios. Is bad cholesterol the same thing as a stroke? And which one of those am I going to therapy for? You know what? I don't actually care. Why rock the boat with all these formal labels? Oh no, the therapy was for kleptomania. Anyway, this woman who is talking to her son who uh, happens to be the other producer. Must be pretty exhausted from this. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm your mother, Aaron, not your grandma. I mean, did you even get out of bed last night? I'm pretty sure he was supposed to say, did you even get into bed last night? Or like, did you even go to bed last night? Since she just said she was up taking care of old Strokey, I feel like this guy keeps up his lines and the crew is like, perfect, you're really checking off the one box we had for you just by, you know, being here. You know how many all-nighters I pulled when you were running the streets? Nights I sat in police stations bailing you out? So don't be talking to me about long nights. Why does the black TV producer also have to be the character with a criminal past? That younger brother from the Trist family walks around like he's full-time ready to break some legs in the name of the Lord. But sure, why reach in that direction when, when there are easy, lazy, outdated stereotypes we can just grab for? This is not good black representation for the record, Pure Flix. Mr. Trisk needs taken care of. So I'm here doing just that. Keep doing your job best way you can and make Mr. Trisk proud of you with those TV shows. Ah, this is some of the most racist shit I have seen since the last time I watched the news or read something online. Clearly, Pure Flix didn't see anything wrong with making their only two black characters direct relatives, with one being a live-in maid who has somehow been obligated to hold someone else's family together, while the white woman who orders her around seizes the opportunity to ascend to her highest possible power since her husband is temporarily incapacitated. There are some really messed up family dynamics going on on in this show, Pure Flix, and this was listed next to Veggie Tales. That younger brother who looks like, you know, he's ready to rough someone up, he's talking to the sister who is the brain surgeon, I think? No, they're talking about the brain surgery sister. Ugh, who are these women? They make them look so similar. But this one's playing golf. They're rich, we know that. She got him home now. And the doctors went along with it? Well, let's just say that mother can be very convincing when she needs to be. Look, it already doesn't make sense that your mother was such a Karen that somehow her husband no longer needed life-saving medical equipment. So please stop reiterating how that happened at the beginning of every single scene. Like, why are we filling in every character on this information? We don't need to know as the audience that every and sister that exists in this extended family tree learned the same thing about the mom. I don't know how many more phone calls with similar looking brunette people we need to have. It feels like I'm at one of my cousin's wedding and I don't know what the f is going on. Once again, I think we could have maybe used the lunch break to make sure we had our lines down, but I'm not gonna tell anyone how to do their job. Yeah, we're only playing nine today. I'll stop by there on my way back. I'll stop by, they're on my way back. Is this show covertly written in iambic pentameter like Shakespeare? Either way, I'm grateful that I got to pop in and say something that sounded so smart. Thanks for the little piece of kibble, Christian God. Ruff, ruff. That's what, every time I get a serotonin boost, it's God being like, here's a little piece of cheese with your pill. Oh, speaking of actors having a weird emphasis on their lines, this guy never phrases his words correctly. Half the on-screen schedule in this network is up in the air at the moment. You're here early. I never understand when actors deliver lines like this. Like, have you never heard people talk in movies? It always sounds the same. He said, half of our on-air schedule is up in the air at the moment. Half of the on-air schedule is up in the air at the moment. You're here early. You're here early. What? I know how this happens. It's because you're taught in film school that good directors uh, never just tell or show the actor how to do something and then have them repeat it. Cause it's disrespectful to the actor. Like you, they're, they're not supposed to just be like a tape recorder who does things exactly how you want. They're the actor. It's their job to bring out the performance and it's the director's job to kind of coach them to give what they're looking for. But sometimes the actor has like one simple line and you're like, what the f did you say that weird for? It's a slippery slope, you know, like at a certain point it's like, I, I I gotta just point out where you're emphasizing it. It's it's like distracting a, my ear a little bit. So I wanna make sure we have a take saying it both ways. That's what I would do. Anyway, did you know that women are whores? I'd love to.
Okay, that was the closest Pure Flix content has ever come to showing us a white nail polished HJ. At least as far as I know. I haven't checked out any of those Veggie Tail episodes yet. He said, excuse me, can you move your hand? I'm not interested in having sex with someone who pulled their dress out of the paper shredder this morning. It got cut when I was reaching for the coffee maker. I don't know what this guy's talking about anymore. This time we all went home and just got some rest. Until then I suggest uh, we get some rest and read some uh, newspapers. Wait, what the f You want me to go home and get some rest so that I can rest and read some newspapers on top of that? <laughs> Why are you giving me so many instructions? Is it because I grabbed at your business bulge? So that's probably gonna be a thing throughout the season. Meanwhile, back at the house, I guess we have the doctor that we wanted <laughs> that the hospital could not provide. They're like, no, no, no. Our family pediatrician who prescribes probiotics, he can help us with this brain death. No change. But he is stable, right? Yes, at this point so far. As far as I can tell from this iPad that's turned off and the zero machines that are monitoring him here in this Best Western Hotel suite, finally the brain surgeon doctor comes in. I don't think I've seen her before, so it, yeah, it's a new character. Oh, I came I'm as fast so as I could. Oh, I know, I came as fast as I could as soon as Aaron called. But the flight's between Baltimore and Hilton Head Island. It's I know. just awful. Wait, why did that episode just end like I was having a dream when they woke me up from anesthesia? Pretty sure this newly introduced character was in the middle of her line, but I'm also not gonna complain that they sort of let us hit the eject button on that plane crash. But still, I gotta know what happens next. So let's touch on the beginning of the next episode. Why would they fade out in the middle of that line? Weirdly, it all gets picked up again here. Flights between Baltimore and Hilton Head Island, it's just awful. It's all right. It's all right. Hi, how are you? I'm. I'm I'm also a neurosurgeon, so you can explain everything to me in specific terms, including why that chair is magically floating off the floor and all of our paintings were bought on The Sims 4. These people are full on living in a Barbie computer game and I'm here for it. The CT was indicative, but inconclusive. And the MRI? Negative for edema or arteriovenous anomaly. You've ordered another round of those tests, presumably. Yeah, I did, but they had a hard time getting an MRI machine up your front step, so I'm gonna try just taking a flash photo up his nostril using my iPhone. Or maybe you could talk your idiot mother into letting us bring him back to an actual hospital. You've ordered another round of those tests, presumably? Nobody talks like that, sweetie. Go back to medical school and remove the part of your brain that taught you how to talk like that. The mom's hair, Donna Mills, she's, uh, the, her hair is fabulous this whole time. She said, my hair and makeup up is gonna is gonna be good. I don't I don't know about the rest of you rats. You rat looking wet dog sons of that Pure Flix can come out on set with the same shade of lipstick and unbrushed hair. But Mama's gonna Mama's gonna look right for this. Should I talk to him? That and healthy dose of prayer. Well, you know I've never been the believer that your father is. And look which one of you still has a fully functioning brain. <laughs> Looks like we know who made the right choice. Just kidding. No offense to people who are God. Play with God. If you play with God and pray with God, I love that for you. Can I play tag too? Breathe. The sister is a believer. She's like the one who's most like her dad. So she's gonna pray. Grant us his recovery so that he may continue to serve you and provide guidance for his family. The mom was like, ooh, yeah, ask God to wake him up, but without that awful gambling addiction. That part of his brain can stay oxygen starved. Am I right, Stephen Brandeis, our accountant? <laughs> also, can you ask God if he'll do anything about your father's erectile dysfunction while he's in there? Thank you. Girls, everybody, I don't know what we just watched. Hilton Head Island was such a fever dream. Like, that's gonna start, when is he gonna wake up? I wanna be in a coma now. Like, that was too much. So many family members, so much like kind of subtle sexism, pretty obvious racism, like Pure Flix. If, it, if, you, if you go back to Pure Flix, anything from like 2016, you might as well be watching like Jim Crow propaganda. It's nuts. Maybe that's too much to say, but I mean, what am I gonna do? Edit it out? No. Let me know what you guys think of this Pure Flix pure trash. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns on Pure Flix series like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here that way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications, and you'll always be the first to know when I got Steve Brandeis from Accountant on your also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for coming to Hilton Head with me today. I will see you next time.